Dean McClung, Archer Monologues. Just got an email. Got an email from, uh, I done deleted it. I've done, I have done deleted the email, but not before I sent a reply. The woman, some politician, I suppose. Anyway, she sent me the email and she asked me to, you know, support uh, the veterans. I won't go into details of the letter. She was asking me for money. Bottom line, she was asking me for money to help pay for some sort of ceremonial nonsense. <clears throat> and she said that, uh, you know, heroes, she called them heroes. Heroes from the revolution to Afghanistan and Iraq. <sighs> Alright. First off, she's a stupid cunt. And secondly, no, I'm not going to give her money. She suffers from an illness, a mental illness. Perhaps brain damage. As a result of being indoctrinated and uh, conditioned and brainwashed and, and all that uh, over, over the course of her lifetime, Probably from pretty much day one. She's been indoctrinated with this stupid idea, this ridiculous, absurd notion that somehow or another, Americans who are joined the military or part of a military that goes to foreign countries, sovereign foreign countries, with real live human beings living in those countries, who have done absolutely nothing to America or American people, have not invaded America, have not attacked America. Innocent people. Foreign countries. The United States of America. You join the, you join the military of the United States of America, the evil empire, I cannot stress that enough. It is pure evil. Has been for quite a long time. However, you join the military of the United States government, you join that, you go to a foreign country, which is illegal. This is not debatable. This is not up for questioning here. Now, I'm not saying you can't question, you can't ask questions. I'm not saying you can't, you know, wonder about things and you can't you know, be curious and, and, and do research and kind of come up with information about situations in the world. And even this one, you can do the research just like I did. You can use your brain. If it's a functioning brain, you can use your brain to learn the truth about things in the world. You can understand the facts. You can understand the conclusions that come from those facts. You can make your own conclusions based on those facts. Documented, proven facts. Logical thinking. You have to come to a conclusion. The only conclusion you can come to. If you're an intelligent person with a functioning brain, with any kind of... You know, <laughs> then you come to the conclusion that the United States government committed crimes against humanity that the military soldiers that participated in these crimes against humanity are guilty of collaborating with the enemy, the enemy of freedom, the enemy of humanity, the enemies of decency, and they are not heroes. They joined up and became a part of the evil empire's war crimes crimes against humanity and I won't get into the American history where the United States government has actually committed crimes against humanity, invaded foreign countries uh, in, interfered in foreign countries and their governments and so on for, you know, for like well over 100 years I read somewhere that there was over 250 illegal acts against of aggression against foreign countries in the history of the United States. 
The United States is the government, by the way. The name of the country is America. The United States is the name of the government. It is the name of and title of the Union, which is a fictitious entity, a corporation. Duh. All right. So, if you join up and go to Afghanistan, and if you did, and if you went, and you did, you participated in war crimes. You participated in crimes against humanity. Those are crimes. Those are valid, legal crimes. You committed a crime. If you obeyed orders, oh, excuse me, what do they say about the Nazis who obeyed orders? Uh, just as guilty as Adolf and his gang. So, mm -mm, no excuse. So if you go to the countries and you participate in the murder of innocent people, men, women, children, babies, pregnant women who have fetuses inside them who will never exist again. They, they're, boom, blew them up with bombs and drones. And in the case of various war crimes around the world, the United States committed heinous crimes against humanity murdering hundreds of thousands of people in Japan in, in World War II. That's not the act of a hero. To go to a foreign land just because your government told you to and just because you're stupid enough to obey an illegal order. I know, I know. You love your country and you want to be right, you want to do the patriotic thing, you want to, you know, respect fellow man that died and, you know, whatever. I understand the idea. I understand the concept. But it's wrong. And we should not glorify murderers. We should not glorify people who went to war like a bunch of barbarians and killed and were killed, maimed, etc. The aggressive war against Afghanistan is totally, absolutely illegal and totally and absolutely uncalled for. And that is totally on the head of the United States government, namely George Bush and his gang of murdering bastards. And Iraq, we all know now that war was a lie. And, oh, we're still in the country. Duh. And here's the thing that really gets my boat going. Kick, did, mm. <sighs> Iraq. No weapons of mass destruction. George Bush. Murder and piece of shit is still walking around alive and well, living in Texas and you know being recognized and even respected by people. Yeah, let's have a memorial. Let's have something to commemorate the hero George W. Bush, a piece of shit Nazi bastard. No, I'm not going to honor people that did crimes against humanity, who committed crimes, who murdered innocent people. In fact, if you went to Iraq and shot a soldier of the Iraqi army at the time, those were people living in their country. They own it. It's theirs, not yours. You have no business being there. They didn't do anything to hurt us or America. Many other countries were that up. So you're not a hero if you go there and you murder people. Oh, by the way, you people that are operating drones... You know, Amer United States government drones that are going like into Pakistan and, you know, dropping bombs on innocent people like wedding parties and stuff. You fucking animal. And you want to be called a hero? You piece of shit. In any civilized world on a planet ever, you would be considered a barbaric murdering bastard. If you did that in America, in your town, in your local town, if you were like, oh, I'm going to take my gun and I'm going to go to my neighbor's house and shoot him 
instead of bomb, you know, set his house on fire and blow up his family. If you did that in America, they would execute you. How can you not see the comparison and see how it is the exact same thing? No excuses. No. There is no argument. There is no discussion. There is no debate. There is no bickering. There is no, you know, all this bullshit like you see on Facebook and so on. That's the same thing. If I go to my neighbor's house and drop a bomb on his house and blow up his family and his kids and his pregnant wife, that's murder. And that is, in some cases, it raises to the level of genocide, like in the case of, say, Vietnam. And Korea, by the way. Let's get this straight, and it's not debatable. You are not a hero, you're a fool. Because you did what any civilized, sane human being would refuse to do. By the way, I did. I refused to go to Vietnam, I refused to be a part of the military that was going to Vietnam and murdering those Vietnamese people, innocent people who have never hurt anyone in America, never attacked America, never would, could, or will ever attack America and destroy their country. Do I need to name some other countries? Iraq, Afghanistan, now Syria, Yemen, Oh, and just in case you think this is a current phenomenon, the United States military went into, because the president, was he named McKinley, was a fool, and sent U.S. military personnel into freaking Hawaii, a free, independent, sovereign, democratic society, and destroyed that culture. 1893, to be exact. So this phenomenon of the United States military empire murdering gang of thugs and maniacs is not new. It's been going on for well over 100 years. So Hawaii is a now 50th state. Oh, really? So did the Hawaiian people actually say, yeah, I want to be a part of that monstrous empire? Mm, I'm guessing no. Upwards of at least 40,000 people were murdered, slaughtered, like genocide, in Hawaii in 1893 by United States military. And by the way, all of that came about because of some Christian missionaries who wanted to control the sugarcane crop and, and, and uh, you know, industry in Hawaii. Much like they tried to take over the sugarcane crops in, uh, say, Cuba and other Caribbean countries. <sighs> Hawaii, 1893. United States Empire of Evil went there, slaughtered over 40,000 of the Hawaiian people, oh, native, native people, indigenous people, committed genocide against those people, destroyed their country, destroyed their culture, and destroyed the humanity that lived there. It was their country. It was theirs, not ours. Genocide. Oh, I'm not even going to talk about the American indigenous people, the, uh, you know, the American Indian, the Native American population that was like totally genocided back in the country, you know. Why don't we talk about that? Crime against humanity. Because that's over. It's gone. It's history. All the people that participated in that crime are dead now.
probably all the people that participated in the crimes against humanity by the United States Empire of Evil against the Hawaiian people are probably dead now too. 1893, I doubt if you're still alive, if you were a soldier back then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not alive. So, the point is this. No, you're not a fucking hero. You're a criminal. And I don't care if you like it, it's the truth. If you can't handle the truth, then, you know, stick your head back in the sand. We're up your ass. There are actually people, family members, that are angry at me because I'm telling the truth now. Because I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it until you people get it. If you're listening to the show and you do get it, I'm not talking to you. You know, you're intelligent. You've got some knowledge and education and, and some intellect. You know what I'm saying. And you know it's true. But if you want a question, go ahead. Question. Oh, by the way, this is a monologue. You don't get to question me. Not while I'm talking on the show, anyway. If you want to send me an email or post a comment on the video underneath the comment section, go for it. Just be aware. If you say something stupid, I'm going to tell you that. You have said something stupid. Because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm honest. And I'm straightforward. And I say what I think. Because what I think is usually right. Eh, margin of error. 3%? I speak a lot of truth. A lot of facts. And I give you logical conclusions. That means, you know, that's like scientific except in the thinking department. Logical conclusions. And I offer offer I also offer critical analytic observations. Those critical analytic observations rise above the status of just being a mere opinion by just some guy. Because I'm not just some guy. Alright, call me narcissistic if you want. I don't care. Because if I am, I am. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, by the way, there's nothing wrong with being a lot of things in this world. Even though people hate on people and they want to hurt people and harm them and beat them up and kill them and torture them and shit. Simply because they are fools and don't understand that they are hating on somebody that didn't do any crime, that didn't do anything wrong, didn't do anything to hurt any other human being. I could tell you what I'm talking about, but you should be able to figure it out by now. If you've been listening to me at all, if you've been reading anything I put on the internet, you should know there's the telephone. I gotta go. Hold on. So, there you have it. <clears throat> so, I'm not, I'm not going to support the U.S. military. And I'm not going to support those who chose their own free will to participate in war crimes and crimes against humanity. The fact of the matter is you had a choice. You could have said no, I'm not participating in war crimes. You could have said no. You chose to serve the criminal empire. The criminally insane U.S. government. Now you can be mad at me all you want. But the facts are the facts. And there's no getting around that. Truth. If you sign up and follow the orders of the insane, criminally insane, genocidal, murderous U.S. Empire, you did that.
one could say you actually committed an act of cowardice by refusing to stand up to the empire and tell them no you're not going to participate in war crimes you're not going to be a part of a crime against humanity you're not going to go off to a foreign country and murder people that live in that country that own that country on a lie because of some sense of false patriotism you have a choice you have free will you have the ability to make decisions you have the responsibility to make correct decent lawful decisions Nuremberg trials the Geneva Convention set this out very clearly following orders is no excuse and it is the in the manual of the United States military manual that you are not obligated to follow orders that are illegal it is your responsibility to know when orders are illegal that's your job that's your responsibility as a citizen and if you're paying attention you know that it was illegal for the United States government to send military troops to Vietnam because that was a crime. The manual states clearly your responsibility. So if you violate the law and commit the crime based on the fact that you're too stupid, too gullible, too naive, too brain dead, to know when, a, when an order from a known criminal is issued to you. Anybody with a functioning brain knows that it was a crime for the United States to invade Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Syria, Hawaii, <laughs> Vietnam, Anybody with a functioning brain knows that you just don't go off to foreign countries and drop bombs on those people. Just because the government said so. And as we all know, the United States government lies. And just as an added note, when you hear the government say something like, um, uh, what's the phrase, uh, national security, understand that the word national means the government. Because a plot of land with some imaginary borders drawn on the map, like let's say continental USA, <laughs> you know that they're talking about the government. So, national security means the security of the government. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. It's, it's true. That's what that means. It's what it's always been. If they meant us, if they meant the American people, if they meant for the security of the American people or for the security of the country or the society called America, they would have said that. It's for Americans' security. So every time you hear the government say things like, oh, it's national security, you know by definition of those words and words mean what they mean if words don't mean what they mean then obviously it's gibberish it means nothing if you use a word and you don't know what the meaning of that word is then you are illiterate and you probably shouldn't say it you probably shouldn't use a word you don't know what it means 
it's like words uh, that's a lot of words and I, I say this quite often words mean what they mean but let's give an example if you're going to use the word child then you should understand what the definition of the word child is and in the context of talking about class of people in a category of people a, a part of the human ra uh, species oh by the way race is like white black African you know species is the whole collection of humanity another one of those words that people misuse it's a human race no, because race does not designate a species. Well, let's say we're talking about dogs. You know, roof. dogs. Uh, the dog race <laughs> shows you how absurd it is to use the word race when you're talking about a species. The bird race what is not clear about what I just said oh by the way I'm not going to entertain arguments over that that's just true I get tired of that I get tired of people arguing about facts I get tired of people arguing about logical truth I really do it's just annoying as hell You know, it's sort of like saying, oh, I'm a four-year-old, I know nothing about physics, and I'm going to argue with Stephen Hawking about physics. You understand? If you're a four-year-old, you don't know anything about physics, as a rule. Uh, so, uh, why would you argue with someone who is an expert on physics? Don't you see how absurd that is? Don't you see how absolutely, utterly stupid it is to argue with people who are obviously more educated, enlightened, have more insight into the subject matter that you're arguing about? Why would you argue with someone who already knows, you know, the subject? And I know certain subjects. I'm an expert in certain subjects. What qualifies a person to be an expert? I don't know. If he knows, like, uh, you know, I mean, let's just say, roughly, if I know 98% of everything there is to know about a subject, I'm probably an expert. If 80% of what I know is wrong, <laughs> then I'm a fool. Or ignorant, and I need to learn more stuff and correct what I know that's wrong. I mean, that's not true. Uh, why would I believe that? And why would I be talking with you about something I don't know anything about. Well, I know a lot of people that talk and don't know shit about what they're talking about. If you don't know anything about Hawaii and uh, the history of Hawaii, and if you don't know about the fact that the U.S. military invaded a sovereign country called Hawaii that was not hurting anybody, that wasn't waging war against anybody in 1893, then you also understand that that was a criminal act by the government of this country to do that. National security had nothing to do with it at all. Some missionaries were greedy and they wanted to own and control the sugarcane crops all of them on the planet, apparently. So, 
So, the thing is this. If you go to a foreign country in the guise of a U.S. military personnel, personnel, a soldier, and you shoot people and drop bombs on people in that foreign country, and that country has never attacked America, has never threatened America, has never committed any crimes against America, has not invaded America, then you're the aggressor, and you're participating in a crime against humanity. End of story. That's true. Not open for discussion. Now, I know people are, oh yeah, everything is open for discussion. Yeah, well, yeah, fine. Okay, good. If you feel compelled to argue with someone over something that is a proven fact, then go at it. But not with me. Because the first thing out of my mouth is going to be, after you say something really stupid, is, that's stupid, I'm not talking to you anymore. Stop talking to me. You're an idiot. Alright? Seriously. Now, I, I, I understand that Probably, I'm not even going to say probably, it is almost 100% likely that every family in America, or every person in America that's been born here, raised here, lived here for any period of time, has somebody in their family who has served the evil empire, that is to say the United States government. My father was in World War II. My companion's father was a career uh, Navy, Air Force. I think he was a career Air Force personnel. And uh, he was a supply clerk, which means he aided and abetted the enemy. And he probably believed that everything that the government of this country did and the military of this country did was, was what, a valid thing to do? Was, he was a patriot, I imagine. From what I've heard, he, was, he believed, as many people believe, erroneously, that the United States government is good and cool and awesome and America it has something to do with the government. The, the government and America are uh, pretty much the same thing. It's not true. So, he was a supply clerk. To my knowledge, from what I understand, from listening to people tell me stories about him, he never murdered anybody. Or he never killed anybody. Not even one human being, ever. To my knowledge. How could I condemn him? And there are people who, in my family who are angry at me because I told them the truth about this and then you know their only justification for being angry at me is that I, I have no respect for people who served their country or that I'm being disrespectful to those who died serving their country <sighs> all right well, that's foolish thinking. And I'm not condemning everybody with one broad brushstroke here. I'm not suggesting that if your father was in World War II, as mine was, that my father was some sort of evil bastard murdering pig or whatever. Because, for one thing, I don't know if my father ever killed anyone or not. From the stories my father told me, he was uh, a non-combatant type person in the, in the service. He uh, was a chauffeur and worked in the carpool and the mechanics pool, as I understand it.
My father has passed away many years ago, and I'll never be able to ask him what he did exactly, aside from being a chauffeur for generals and working on the jeeps. <laughs> um, however, the principal thing is separate from the emotional thing. The principal thing is, based on the law, real laws and real crimes and the definitions of what a real crime is, which is where somebody was deprived of their human rights as opposed to some fictitious fabricated arbitrary created out of thin air law that the government passes nowadays like Title 18 of the U.S. Code, which is total fabricated nonsense and a crime against humanity in itself, and it uh, should be repealed immediately, and those who voted to pass it should be executed for crimes against humanity and treason, senators, congressmen, and so on. Because you just don't make laws like that. It's, just, it's insane. Like, oh, now, every American is a felon because of Title 18. All right, so there's my position on that. If you want to be mad at me because I told you the truth, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're mad at me. I'm not sorry for telling you the truth because that's my job. That's what I do. All right, this is D. McClung, Archer Monologues, and I'm going to cut it off right there and end it right now. Three, two, one.